What's up everyone? John Ringer from Techno Buffalo here. So I do a show called Ask the Buffalo where people ask me questions. And this question I get all the time and I try to answer it every few years. I get it on social media too, but it's if you could build your own like Franken phone, what would it be? So I want to take parts that exist from current phones. I don't want to like create different operating systems. I don't want to say I want this part from Android and this part from iOS and that part from Blackberry and put it all together. I'm going to tell you what my perfect phone would be with things that exist right now. And if you lived in a harmonious, synergist world, maybe somehow, miraculously, this phone could come to fruition, although it, it never would. So it's a phone. Let's start with the screen. I would choose the screen that exists right now on the Galaxy S6 Edge Plus, possibly even the Note 5, but I love that curved screen. I think Samsung makes the best phone displays on the market. Uh, their QHD panels look incredible. Their AMOLED technology is awesome. And they look absolutely great. So 5.5 inch QHD, a little bit of curve, doesn't have to have any additional functionality just because I, I think it looks really cool, uh, would be my screen of choice. Uh, who's gonna build the exterior casing of this phone? I'm gonna tap HTC to do that. Say what you will about HTC phones, whether you love them or hate them, but their build quality is outstanding. Uh, I love their metal design. Uh, it feels really high end. I like sort of the cool feel when I pick up the phone. I don't feel anything hollow in it. I would absolutely tap HTC uh, to build the phone. When it came to battery technology, uh, I would probably go back again to Samsung uh, and tap them for a larger battery that we've got in the Galaxy S6 Edge Plus. Um, so we can use that wireless charging uh, with PMA or Qi. Uh, I would of course uh, add the ability to have expandable storage. The battery I was just talking about, it would be removable. Sometimes you're traveling, you want to carry an extra battery, though for me it's few and far in between, but I would like to have the option uh, to do that. On the processor, going back to Samsung, uh, one of their OctaCore Exynos chips, again, same chipset that currently exists in the S6 Edge Plus and the Note 5 is incredibly powerful. Uh, I would also use that same four gigs of RAM uh, that are inside of these phones to make sure I was gonna have a phone that would work and be powerful for a long, long, long time. Uh, on the camera front, uh, I would take the camera that exists in the iPhone 6S Plus, that 4K camera, the 12 megapixel resolution. I think iPhones take the best uh, shots of any camera phone out on the market. I think the Samsung phones are very close second, uh, but I would tap Apple for the camera module. Uh, and that was a tough one, operating system. I'd have to pick one that already exists. And I went back and forth on iOS and Android, like I do. I go back and forth on iOS and Android. It seems like I switch like once a week. I usually just kind of throw my hands up in the air and carry one of each because I use software that help me run the business that only exists on one uh, or the other. And I think if I had to pick an OS, I'd pick Android on there, but with a caveat. The reason I'm picking Android uh, is I like to see information at a glance on my home screen. I don't want to have to open an app to do it. I like to see what the traffic was yesterday, where my stocks are at, what the news is at. Now the caveat being, if 3D Touch gets developer support, and I could do all that with just doing a forced touch on the screen, perhaps I would revert back uh, to iOS. But right now, having not really tested thoroughly uh, what 3D Touch is going to be, I'm throwing uh, Android on there. Uh, to charge the sucker up, uh, I'm gonna use, probably not a surprise, USB-C. Uh, one cord for everything is a lot simpler. Um, I use a MacBook when I travel, so I just have to worry about carrying one cord, one external battery pack to power both. Just make life a lot easier. Uh, would be the phone that I would choose. The speakers is not one that I talk about, but I would pick the speakers, either HTC's boom sound, or the speakers in the new Moto X are super loud. I mentioned that in our review uh, of the Moto X, but I had to turn the volume down, which is something that I haven't really done um, recently. And the last thing that I would add in there would be Moto Maker, be able to customize the hell out of this thing. Things from color, textures, uh, and front accents and side accents uh, would be what I would choose. And the last bit of software that I would add, uh, I would take Motorola's uh, take on Android with the Motorola enhancements there. So close to stock Android uh, with those Motorola enhancements would I be my ideal smartphone. I would have power, I'd have build, I'd have battery, I'd have charging, and of course with the quick charging. Uh, built right in and wireless charging capabilities. Uh, I'd have a killer camera that can shoot 4K. I'd have expandable storage. Uh, and I would be a really happy guy for probably like three weeks. And I'd be like, need something new because I need immediate gratification. That's side effect of this job. I just always need new things to come. It's sad, but it happens. 
Uh, and that would be my ideal smartphone. So the question to you, friends, what would your ideal smartphone be based on things that exist right now, not combining parts of different uh, software, but that exists right now in piecemeal, what would your favorite phone be? I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. And thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed. I put a lot of thought into this video. Uh, until next time, I'm John Reitner from Techno Buffalo, and I'll talk to you, friends, in the next one.